Bienvenidos, worldwide fans of our planet's highest entertainment with an edge. I mean, Fuego here, welcoming you to my namesake program and Fuego Tainment. That's right, uh, you can just call me Fuego for short. And uh, it must be a Thursday because this is Fuego doing a throwback review. This is where I reach back into the past and check out a film that is a first time watch for me that I probably should have checked out upon initial release. But hey man, I mean this is a film from 1987 that uh, yeah I was probably a little too young when this initially came out. And uh, But you know it's, it's definitely upon first viewing one that in my estimation actually holds up. And this is the fantasy kind of horror-ish, but I mean, I, you know, it's not as like full-blown horror as I would say. This is more along the lines of like a labyrinth and, um, I don't know, never-ending story and, uh, I guess maybe in some ways it's got similarities to the Monster Squad. That's about as far horror as I would go, but yes, we are talking about the Gate. That's right. This was directed by a Hungarian uh, dude, uh, actually from Budapest originally, as a matter of fact. And uh, yeah, this was uh, released in 1987 and stars a very, very young Stephen Dorff. And I gotta say, this was so much more of a just edgy fantasy film. It really shows you more so than anything that they, they really did not mess around with kid stuff back in the day and so uh, essentially the film starts out with Steven Dorff's young character and he has this nightmare at the very beginning that uh, the treehouse is like knocked down and uh, there's like you know all of this destruction in his yard during the storm and then lo and behold when he wakes up the next day he sees that there is like this kind of like hole in the ground and he goes to investigate it with a buddy of his who has recently lost his mother and they find this big ass geode. Initially they find a smaller one and it's funny myself and my, my best friend Sam growing up like his dad would take us out to look for geodes like in the forest and stuff here in Arizona and so lots of investigation in that degree but it's funny, his friend, Steven Dorff's little buddy, he's like, he's like, yeah, man, if we find like one of the bigger ones, we'll spend a hundred bucks in, in 1987. Yeah, that's some, that's some serious business. And so they do, in fact, find one, and you know, they eventually take it back to do some investigation. But at the same time around that this is transpiring, uh, Dorff's uh, parents are deciding to go on this trip, and they're just kind of, they're debating whether they want the almost 15-year-old sister to be left in charge while they go out of town for a number of days, which for me is a real head scratcher. Definitely, definitely the 80s, very trusting parents, and especially for the later 80s when the war on drugs had already started up and everything, and I, I mean, you know, so lo and behold, of course, older sister has a party right away when the parents leave and the kids are like drinking beer and, you know, causing a ruckus and just being little bastards. And so, yeah, that's definitely something that goes down. But, um, so weird stuff starts happening shortly thereafter. And that's because, uh, Dorf and his little buddy, they start investigating this hole and they start some digging and whatnot. And they, on the, they basically like, they dig out enough dirt that like there's a legit hole in the ground and we're not talking like you know do it status or anything like that uh, the kid from uh, oh boy honey boy uh, shy shy la uh, mr la Bouf, but yeah so nothing like that we're talking like much more of the fantasy kind of scary variety and uh yeah, man, it's uh, it's fun once it really gets going. But the edginess is the fact that I, I mean, like once it does get going, some of the themes that it deals with are definitely a lot closer to horror than I was expecting. For instance, uh, Dorf's little buddy is really like he's he's gone into a darker place after the loss of his mother that I mentioned, and so he's really into like metal and darker music and stuff like that. I mean. By our standards, it's more like kind of butt rocky since it's since it's the 80s and everything. But I, I gotta say, there's one scene in particular where he's like jamming out to this band and whatnot, and then he puts this like covers over his head and he starts doing this spoken word at the end of the song, and it's all about the old gods coming back to you know reclaim you know the light for their darkness and all this other stuff. It's some serious Lovecraft shit, I gotta say. And uh, yeah, it's it's a lot darker than you would anticipate for an 80s kids fantasy movie, you know, and this is, it is PG-13 though, you know, so this was after that rating had been created, and uh, yeah, they unwittingly uh, just, 
set some stuff into motion that, uh, you know, they're not necessarily intending upon. And, uh, yeah, there's, there's just bad stuff that goes down. There's, uh, like, the dog dies at one particular point and turns out that that works as, like, the crux for bloodshed. Yeah, the dog dies. It's sad, man. And Dorf's character is even, like, sitting there looking at the scrapbook and stuff. It's, it's legit tear-inducing. This was a much more serious, like, child's fantasy film than I was expecting at all because, you know, I mean, yes, Dark Crystal was more serious and the, yeah, I mean, Monster Squad campy to a degree, and there, but there were still some serious moments. This was way more serious than I was anticipating. You know, it legitimately was. We're not talking like, but then again, I guess Never Ending Story was too. So, I mean, this is very much of that of that ilk, and uh, Return to Oz is another one that comes to mind, you know, where it's a kid's movie, but it delves into enough darkness that I was legitimately surprised, and once it gets going, and yes, we see some, like, campy little, like, little creature things running around and stuff, uh, and uh, it, it's claymation-y, so it, it does look better than a lot of the, like, practical, uh, well, actually, I mean, the best thing I could compare it to is, uh, if you remember the little demon duties in subspecies, it's kinda like that, these little monster guys, but, I mean, hey, for a little kid seeing this, it would be legitimately spook spooky shizzle, man, and, uh, yeah, and little Dorf, I gotta say, kid had chops, even this young, and I've been a big fan of Steven Dorf for a long, long time. Uh, I think one of the first things I ever saw him in was the original Blade, but I mean, the guy is just a kick-ass actor, and even as a child actor, you could tell he had the talent, he was rearing and roaring and ready to go, and, uh, you know, even the older sister's good, like, all of the kids, whether they're playing assholes, like the older sister's friends, and, you know, some of the, the male love interests and stuff, I mean, all the kids are interestingly snarky, whether stereotypical or, you know, the older sister who does seem caring and compassionate despite the fact that she has a bunch of friends whispering in her ear to be mean to her little brother and stuff. Like, oh, you're a little midge, you're a nerd. And yes, there are some 80s-isms of people, you know, they're two, the two sisters that are friends, they say that Dorf and his, uh, his best buddy are fagging out and you're just like, wow, that would not fly today, man. So, yes, it is a relic of its time in a lot of ways, but this is one that I am shocked that I never got around to seeing, even as I got, you know, as I grew in the early 90s and started actually checking out some of these films like Never Ending Story and Return to Oz and, you know, Dark Crystal and Labyrinth and stuff like that. This is definitely one that I think it's, it's up there. It ages well. I'm actually gonna buy it. I liked it so much. Uh, also, from my understanding, there is uh, a sequel that was made three years later, same director, um, uh, it brings back Dorf's friend, but not Dorf, you know, that family has apparently moved away. Uh, I've heard it's diminishing returns, but at this point, since I like the original so very much, I gotta check it out. Uh, also in 2011, they were apparently trying to remake this with none other than, uh, Alex Winter of Bill and Ted fame. That didn't end up transpiring, but, um, I don't know. If done well, and if it was like kind of a, maybe re sort of thing, I mean, Hey, who knows? Could be a lot of fun. I'm gonna check out that sequel though, and perhaps, uh, perhaps I'll do a review of that too. If you guys want, let me know in the comments below if you have seen this movie, if you dig it, and what you thought of it. So, I've been having Fuego. Y'all can find moi on all social media sectors like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, FYI, every Thursday here on Fuego Tainment is when I do these like throwback videos. Yes, Throwback Thursday. Everybody knows about that. But this is more so like a, like a Fuego Nuevo, like it's a, it's like a retro Fuego, something that's new to me, but has been around for a while. So yeah, I guess it's more that uh, Thursday's a retro Fuego. Let's just put it like that going forward. And uh, here on my personal channel, um, yeah, there's all kinds of different reviews of Star Wars and, uh, you know, art house stuff. I mean, you name it, so many different things. It basically spans the whole gamut aside from uh, the really, really, like, heavy your horror, which is what if you head to youtube.com slash the horror show channel, that's where you can find like the seriously scarific stuff that I uh, review. That's uh, a group channel, so myself, Cecil Ayer, Susie von Slota, Marsha Parker, uh, that's where we do reviews, trailer reactions, unboxings, video game let's plays, all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, yeah, in this whole self-quarantining, social distancing, whatever, I'm getting the chance to catch up on a lot of cool stuff that I never checked out before. So once again, I mean, for moi, 
Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, so on and so forth. And uh, lastly, uh, I am on a program a couple Mondays a month, because it used to be every Monday, and then when we had no more box office to talk about, things have changed a little bit. But uh, yes, uh, on the Willis Greedy YouTube channel, a program called Show Business, myself, CP, the showrunner over there, along with Lindsay Mimsy from My Two Cents of Nonsense and Chauncey K. Robinson, we talk at this point, um, it's really just movie delays, the state of the industry, and whatever stories kind of trickle through the pipeline that we can discuss. So lastly, I extend that grande gracias once more. Aben fuego, y'all been awesome. And until the reel of ca comes around once more, hasta luego, sin amigos and constant readers and viewers alike. But I'm hopeful that we get to share more of this palaver sooner rather than later. Peace out, and stay safe, peeps. Watch more movies.